Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. This is Operation Cerberus. It is a postcard game that you get from either Against the Odds magazine or from LPS Publishing. Whenever you buy a title, you get a free postcard game. So this is one of the ones I got. We're just going to do a playthrough here. I don't do reviews of postcard games because the fact that uh, someone was able to make a postcard with a entire game including game board rules and player counters on it uh, makes any postcard game a winner so we don't review them we just do playthroughs but let me show you the setup and then I'll go through the sequence of play all right setups real easy you play, place the British alert marker on one and then we turn this around so you can see this is actually a two-player game but for the purposes of this playthrough, I'm just doing it with one player. And you put the Luftwaffe air cover on two, which is effective. And then you always keep the fighter command support out for the British, because anytime they get planes, they automatically get fighter support, so we won't put that in the cup. And the Germans get four ships here, one BC, or excuse me, two BCs, one CA, and a DDE boat escort, and they all start on the Operation Cerberus start position there. They're two-sided, but they're very thin. I didn't get the free die-cut counters with this one, so I had to cut them out. And the German, or excuse me, not the Germans, the British start with one ship on the map. It's uh, right here. They can put it anywhere on here. I just choose to put it here. It's the Vosper MTB. The writing's really small on the postcard here, so I'm wearing reading glasses in order to read a lot of the writing. So if you see on the map, you have mines in certain places on the map which can damage the German ships. The basic thing the Germans want to do is they want to start here and get to the end, excuse me, get to the end which is right here while losing as few ships as possible. We'll go over the victory conditions in a minute. So let's go over the sequence of play. On postcard games you want to do a little photocopy of the rules on the back because otherwise you're going to have to keep flipping the postcard to refer to the rules. But let's go over the basic sequence of play. You have British alert level determination which, which doesn't be isn't done until turn two. You have uh, Luftwaffe air cover determination which isn't done until, until turn two and then RAF air strength determination that's how you figure out how many planes the Royal Air Force gets and then Royal Navy intervention if the British alert level is high enough the Royal Navy gets additional ships and then you have ship movement and mine attacks. The way ship movement is is uh, a ship unless it's disabled or uh, crippled rather it can move two it can move either one or two but if it's crippled it can only move one and if you happen to land in a space with a mine and you only moved one you're less likely to get hit but if you move two you're more likely if you have a destroyer with that will reduce your likelihood of setting off a mine and then there's air attacks uh, most of the air attacks in this game are from the British on the Ger German ships however uh, the German sh uh, aircraft are not allowed to attack this little MTB here, but if later on they get re real big ships on the map, you can attack those. So most of the time, the Germans don't really get any air power. And then there's surface naval combat. Um, the rules don't state whether surface naval combat occurs when you're on two zones that are adjacent or if you happen to be in the same zone. So I've just made a rule that says if you're in the same zone as the enemy, then you can have surface naval combat. Let's go over the victory conditions now. The German wins a decisive victory if the two BCs and CA, which are crippled or not, have exited Area 7 into the end box, or a marginal victory if only two of the three ships make it. The British player can win a marginal victory if he sinks any two of the BC or CA ships, or he gets a decisive victory if all three are sunk. Reduce the British level of victory for each British BBCA or DD sunk. Any other result is a stalemate. So as far as sinkings, the D, uh, MTB doesn't really count towards the sinking, so that won't affect the end of the game. It's just there to give the Germans a headache. All right, let's do turn number one. First step. 
British alert level determination doesn't take place till step two. Second step, uh, Luftwaffe air cover determination doesn't take place till turn two. So we do Royal, Royal Air Force air strength determination. Let me get my dice here. So we'll go to their side here since I'm playing both sides. So we roll the dice. It's at, uh, even rather. So it's the British alert, oh sorry, British alert level moved here, it's at uh, alert level one. British alert level plus two aircraft drawn, so it'll be a total of three aircraft. And the number, sorry, Luftwaffe is supposed to be on two. The number is less than or equal to the Luftwaffe air cover, so they're half strength. So let's pull randomly pull out three from the cup and make them half strength, which is the red side. So that one's a strength of two, that's a strength of two, and that's a strength of two. So assign the fighter to one because it will help them. Remember, they get a free fighter support each turn. So now we'll go to Royal Navy intervention, which doesn't occur yet. They would have to be on a British alert level of four to get ships, so they're not getting any ships. So ship movement and mine attacks. I can move up to two areas, but I'm only going to move one because it will protect me from the mines. So I can move one. And I'm stacked with a DDE boat, which means I get a negative one to my die roll. And as you can see, die roll of less than or equal to five equals no effect. So the worst I can roll is a six, but I get a negative one from the DDE boat. So it's impossible for me to hit a mine. But if I would have went two areas, uh, then it would be possible because I would have got a plus one for moving two areas. So they're safe from the mine. Now we do air attacks. First, they choose their target. They're not going to bother with that escort. They're going to go after the famous Prince Eugen. So the Germans get anti-aircraft defense. It's either their Luftwaffe air cover or two, whichever is greater. Luftwaffe air cover is two, so that's what they get. So they're getting uh, these guys. There'll be a plus one to the die roll though, because this one has uh, uh, fighter command support. So I get a three, which becomes a four, which is greater than that uh, two there. Or, or not that two, is greater than my anti-aircraft value of two, so he's alive. So I'm going to need a one or two to kill that gentleman. Miss, because I got a five, and this one got a two, so he's actually shot down. He goes back in the cup. All right, now the British are going to try to damage the ship. Each one will roll a d6. And I add the Luftwaffe air cover modifier, which is a plus one, unless they're with fighter support. He's got fighter support, so that's just going to be an even die roll. And he gets a one, which is less than the com or equal to the combat factor of the aircraft, which is two, so he damages the Prince Eugen. That was a good attack. And now the other bomber will roll. There'll be a plus one to this die roll because uh, we have Luftwaffe air cover and this guy doesn't have fire, fighter support. So one becomes two. Uh, yeah, it's less than or equal, so they actually sunk the Prince Eugen. Interesting. So it's not good for the Germans. Very effective air attack. All right, let's put these aircraft back in the cup. Fighter support always stays out since they get them every turn. All right, so let's see what else is left on the sequence of play. Surface naval combat, there is none. So we go to the next turn. Now we do British alert level determination. There's a little chart on here that I got to roll on. This chart right here, so let's roll a dice. And I get a five, so it goes up one level. Right, so they got a level of two, so they're gonna get more aircraft most likely this turn. And then we do Luftwaffe air cover determination. Alright, so it's this chart here. 
and I rolled a four, which is no change, so it stays on two. And now it's time for Royal Air Force Air Strength Determination. So let's go back over here. Normally I just read this upside down instead of just keep flipping it, but I want to flip it so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, here's the table here. So I roll a three, which is odd, so it's British Alert level plus one, which so two plus one to get three aircraft. And the number three is greater Luftwaffe air cover, so these aircraft are at full strength. So let's pull out the three, randomly three aircraft. All right, these are powerful aircraft, they're fours. Wish I had die cut counters. These thin little things are hard to manipulate. All right, I'll give him the fighter support. And let's go back to the German side. All right, what's next on the list? Royal Navy intervention, there is none, they're not high enough. They'd have to be here, number four, to start getting ships. So we're gonna do ship movement and mine attacks. They're gonna move two, so they're in this area. There's no mines there, so they're safe from mines this turn. Now there's air attacks, Luf and aircraft values, Luftwaffe air cover or two, whichever is greater, so it's two. And I roll against each attacking aircraft. This one I have to add a plus one to the die roll because I got fighter cover. All right, misses that. This one I need a one or two, no fighter cover. This one is shot down. And this one here. Sorry, I forgot to mention which ship they were attacking. The British are attacking the BC Scharnhorst. All right, so it's now it's time for the British to try and damage or sink the ship. All right, so this is a D6. I don't add the Luftwaffe air cover because of fighters there. So that's a three, which is less than his value of four. So he damages the Scharnhorst. Scharnhorst is damaged. Now this guy will go here. Uh, this one I do add plus one to it for the Luftwaffe air cover because he doesn't have fighter support. One, two, which is less than his combat factor, so he sinks the ship. Interesting. I've had some games where the Germans just uh, go make it all the way through without getting any damage. This one, it looks like the British are doing some really effective air attacks, so these go back in the cup. All right, anything left this turn? Surface naval combat, none. Okay, so now we're going to turn number three. All right, we'll start with the British air level, alert level determination. Roll on this, Let's see what they get. They get a one, so it goes down one. That's a little bit of good news for the Germans. So we go back here, and the Germans will see if their Luftwaffe air cover level changes. They roll a one, so it goes down a level. Not good. All right, third phase, Royal Air Force Strength Determination. All right, so we roll a dice. They get a five, which is odd, so it's British Alert level plus one. So it'll be two fighters, and it's greater than the Luftwaffe air cover. So two fighters at full strength. Here's the first one, which is a four. Let's pull out another one here. Right, this one's a three, so he's going to put the fighter cover with the four. All right, Royal Navy intervention. Nope, not this turn. All right, what do we have next here? Ship movement and mine attacks. So these two will move here. There's a mine there, but they have a destroyer. And they only moved one, so the mine can't defeat them, but they're on the same space as this little ship here, so there will be surface combat in, in uh, after the air attack this turn. All right, so now it's air attack. So the anti-aircraft value will be two. The British choose. They're not going to bother with that destroyer. They're going to attack this big guy here. Who is this? The, I can't read this even. 
owner sent sow or something. I can't read it even with the reading glasses. <laughs> All right, so they're attacking that guy. So he fires his anti aircraft at this one here and a plus one because of the fighter cover. So he misses. Second one here, he needs a one or a two. One, he does manage to shoot that one down. All right. Okay, so this is going to go in for the kill. All right, the bomber's going in. So it'll just be an even die roll and hit a, f a four or less. He damages the ship, gets a one, so the ship is damaged. All right, so now there's going to be some ship to ship combat here. All right, so let's pull these out. Obviously, all the Germans are going to be attacking this little guy, and this little guy is going to attack uh, the big ship here. So the Germans will go first, everything simultaneously. So he's one greater than him, so he gets a plus one to his die roll. And if his uh, die roll is two or greater, he will uh, damage that ship. So a three, yes, he damages that ship. All right, this one will go now. Uh, he's he's attacking the previous number because remember it's all simultaneous, which is two, so it's even. So if he rolls a two or higher, he hits him. He rolls a five, so this one's sunk, but he gets the fight back. So he's got a negative one to his die roll because he was attacking this big ship here. And if he his overall overall is uh, three or greater, he'll sink that ship. Yes, it is. So this is sunk. So all that's left is the escorts. So really, the British have won at this moment, but should we even continue on? Ah, I'll see if the, the destroyer actually doesn't add any points if it gets to the end here. So yeah, this is a major British victory as far as I can tell. Let me reread the victory conditions here. The British player wins a marginal victory if he sinks any two of the BC or CA victories, or a decisive if all three are sunk. Reduce the level of victory for each British main ship sunk. So the only possible thing that could happen here to prevent the British from getting a major victory is if somehow the British alert level here gets to four and these ships come out and the Luftwaffe air cover sinks them, which is essentially impossible. Let, let, let's play it out. All right. All right, let's figure out the British alert level. Put that back in the cup. Germans don't lose very often in this game. Um, this is kind of an oddball game. Usually they win. So let's determine the British alert level here. Gets a five, so it goes up one level to there. And then Luftwaffe gets a five, no change. So let's figure out how many British ships there are. Or excuse me, British aircraft, there, there are, that's even, so it's BAL plus two, so they get all the aircraft. And it's greater than the Luftwaffe air cover value. So they're all full strength. Let's turn back to the German side. All right, Royal Navy intervention, none, ship movement, and mine attacks. He's going to move to, he's uh, unaffected by mines since he's a destroyer. All right, so air attacks, uh, the anti-aircraft value is going to be two. So t uh, roll plus one versus him. That's a four, no, I need a one or two to kill that one, that one, or that one. So let's go against him, shoots him down. This one, he lives. And this one here, roll the six, he lives. So let's do the air attack here. This one here goes after him, rolls a d6, there's no modifier since he's stacked with fire cover. So he gets a one which is less than or equal to the aircraft combat factor, so he damages this. 
And the next one goes. And he gets a four, which is less than or equal to that factor, so he sinks this one. All right, so that is a decisive British victory. Just wanted to show you guys this game. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, if you liked the video, please click like on it. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, have a good evening.